ladies and gentlemen, I know Ime Odoka, you know, a little bit. I know it's, I know one of his family members really well. And I know Ime is not a guy who's going to shine the light on himself. Um, but I, I don't know. It's, it, it's just interesting to me that Lisa Salters is an industry veteran. And when have you guys ever seen a game of that magnitude where the head coach wasn't interviewed? Even I, I believe when Marcus Smart was being interviewed, Marcus Smart didn't win a, he didn't win MVP, right? Jason Tatum won MVP of the Eastern Conference Finals. So they interviewed, they had Cornbread Maxwell, who was acted like a complete and utter fool when he was up there um, representing the Boston Celtics, just a nut, but he got airtime. Then they interviewed Jason Tatum, who ended up becoming uh, the MVP of the, of, of the conference playoffs. Then they interviewed Jalen Brown. Then they interviewed Marcus Smart, who didn't even play in all the games. But somehow they could not find Ime Udoka, even when all that was going on, ladies and gentlemen. They showed a picture of Ime Udoka. They showed him. It wasn't like he went to the locker room and hid. They showed him. He was he was on the floor. It wasn't like he was hiding. But it, it, am, am I wrong in, uh, you know, being a little concerned about that? Let's see. Uh, Aaron Janowski says, um, that makes zero sense to me. How do you interview? The, how do you not interview the coach? Have we gone? A step further in this era of acknowledging players are becoming more and more important than the coach. You know, that's a good question, Aaron. Uh, Kenny McReynolds, what's good, brother? Good to see you. Um, I think, I, I don't know. I, I know that Eme Aaron is a guy who doesn't seek the limelight. He likes to stay behind the scenes. He likes to be, you know, really composed, close to the cuff. Doesn't, doesn't really want to give you a lot. Gives you enough, but, you know, no, Michael Payne. He, uh, could he have turned down the request to be interviewed? No, because those networks pay big money to have access. And everybody knows that when you win an Eastern Conference Finals, that the coach is one of the main people to be interviewed. So, no, even if the coach wants to get out of it, because uh, Emay's mentor, Greg Popovich, Believe me, he would have gotten out of a ton of interviews if he could, but they get fined severely for that. So no, uh, they cannot uh, ask, they cannot be excused from that interview. That's a good question, uh, Michael. For those of you that are on uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, and, and YouTube, hit the link. You can I'll pull you up. You can join me on the conversation. We're going to start doing this a little bit more. I'm going to start bringing you guys in on the conversation, bring you up on screen. Because I, I want to get, I want, especially like Michael Payne, Aaron Janowski, people who are uh, tribe members, I want to give you some love and give you an opportunity to express yourself. Drew Seven Ski, good to see you, partner. Thanks for coming on. So I don't know. I, I was sitting there with my boy watching the game, me and Don, and I sit there and both of us look at each other because we're watching all the interviews. Jason, uh, Cornbread Maxwell, Jason Tatum. Jalen Brown, Marcus Smart, and no Ime Udoka. I don't, I don't understand it. I, I really don't. Thank you, Carrie D. Love you, babe. Um, yeah, I, I don't understand that. So, and, and Lisa knows better than that. You know what I'm saying? Thank you, Let's Let's Toast Media. Appreciate that. Uh, Lisa understands that. You, you, you've got to get the head coach, even as you're interviewing and you're you're waiting. Because there's a period of time where it's not it's, it's not as smooth live. I'm not saying Lisa's job was easy, but uh, she she knows she's a veteran. Even when you're switching players, sometimes you have to once the interview's done, you have to pull back, you have to talk and look and look around and say. And, and you guys have seen this post game interviews. Hey, he make a. Uh, Coach Udoka, come on over here. And they get called out on national television. They got to come. But Lisa Salters didn't turn around one time. And I don't know. It, it, and I know it, it's game seven, a lot going on. I've done um, sideline reporting live during games. It's not easy, ladies and gentlemen. 
it's definitely not easy. So I'm not, I'm not saying that, oh, that's my man Brady. What's up, Brady? Good to see you, man. Um, I'm not saying that that is that is easy. Uh, but I just I I was very, very surprised because all throughout the playoffs, I think Ime Udoka is beginning the short end of the stick. He has not been given as much love as his counterparts that have progressed through the playoffs. Right? Steve Kerr gets all this love, as he should. Great coach. Activist. He needs to get the attention. But so does Ime Udoka. Lindsay, uh, what's up, Lindsay? I see that's what I'm saying. L- Lindsay is sitting there like, what? What is going on here? And so I just I, I I didn't think I was crazy, ladies and gentlemen, but I wanted to come on and see what you guys had to say. Fred D239133. Good to see you. Oh, what's up, Joy? Good to see you, Joy. Thanks for joining. Uh, Mr. Smith, 8085. So I just, you know, it, it's it's surprising to me, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, that's all. And I just wanted to see if anybody had as, as you know, compassionate a stance on this as I do. And obviously, <laughs> since none of y'all wanted to jump in, um, I'm going to pin the uh, the links if you guys want to jump in with me. But I wanted to see if anybody else felt the same way I did. You know, uh, it's not like Ime Udoka is an ugly dude. Hell, he he used to be married to Nia Long, right? The dude is handsome. He's a good-looking guy, well-spoken, hell of a coach. Uh, and, and one of the quotes that I heard that I loved what he said. I love this, ladies and gentlemen. He said, organizations like the Boston Celtics don't celebrate Eastern Conference championships. Oh, I thought that was spot on. What's up, Nikki Lane Perkins? Good to see you. Oh, I thought that was spot on. Let me say it again. Ime Odoka, and this was a print quote that I saw because obviously he wasn't re- he wasn't interviewed right after the game, which I thought he should have been. But uh <laughs> yeah, that'd be a long bag of something else, ain't it? Uh, so yeah, so, so I just, you know, it's not like he's a he's an unattractive guy. He's a great guy, and he gets it. He's part of the 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 Celtics and the Lakers. I, I don't know which one has which one has more championships. In I think it's still the Celtics, but the Celtics are the most successful franchise in the NBA, and he has a presence of mind to say we're happy to move on, but we don't celebrate some conference championships. We celebrate NBA titles. I thought that was gangster. So salute to Ime, Ime, Ime Udoka for getting his team into the NBA finals and doing it with a ton of class. And even though he got dissed on national television, he still handles it. And nothing changes with Ime. He's like this all the time. Whether the Celtics are up 13 and they're losing a lead late in the game, which they did on a number of occasions, or when they're down 15 and they're coming back, Ime Odokas, he does not change. Doesn't change. B. Houston 34, what's up, man? Did you see Coach Udoka's face when he wasn't interviewed? That's what I was talking about. And I, I, I'm thinking to myself, like, dang, Lisa Saunders, you know, ladies and gentlemen, there's there's always some backstories. We as fans of the game, and I'm I'm a little bit more on the inside because I call NBA games. I was a former NBA player. I've got relationships all throughout the league. There's always some backstory that sometimes we're not accustomed to or we're not privy to. I don't think that there's anything personal going on between Lisa and Ime in terms of, there, there's nothing personal, but it just would indicate something was off because, again, Lisa Salters is a, is a pro. She's one of the best at her job. And for her to have that huge of a mistake was very, very surprising. I didn't even go on Twitter to find out because I was so mad. I didn't want to I didn't want to see what Twitter had to say. Um, so, yep, yeah, that, that is what it is. And, you know, obviously I was a little bit more hot about it that everybody else was. Uh, let me see. He could have got, he could have just gotten overlooked. It happens sometimes. No, it doesn't. Facebook user. 
when have you ever seen in that scenario a head coach never not be interviewed at the end of win game seven on the road? The Celtics won three games in Miami. I believe that's an NBA record. In a seven-game series of that magnitude, when you get to the NBA Final Four and you win seven games and you win the seventh game on the opposing team's floor, and that's the third time you won on the road in a series? What's up, Tina Strong? Right? That's not a mistake that happens. It doesn't happen sometimes. Facebook user, I'm sorry. I, I I totally disagree with you on this. Or maybe they were pulling for Miami and Coach Spolster to win. Great coach, though. Happy for him. 